Model Making Guru is sponsored by eModels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. eModels.co.uk, make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome to a new video build series. I say build, it's not really build, it's more of a painting process evaluation and testing and playing, it doesn't really catch, does it? It's a new video series, uh, we're going to be working on something a bit special. Uh, now it's something you've seen me unbox, it's something that's massive, enormous. I don't know how I'm going to do it because it doesn't even fit on my workbench, but it's going to be cool because we're going to be working on... Yes, the Jack Pacific 31 inch, 31 inch Master Chief. Unfortunately, from Halo 5, yeah, Halo 4 and 5, yeah, not, my, not my favorite Halo games. But it's the Master Chief from Halo 4 slash 5 slash 3, almost kind of quite, sort of, not quite. This is Mark 6 armor, but it changed over the game, so eh. So, anyway, yes, we're going to be working on this. Uh, it's not really a build, like I said, because there's no real build. I've got to take it apart and I've got to reassemble it. But we're going to be doing the paint job. We're going to give him something better than this factory paint job, which is basically just the rubber stamp screen print green, grey, and or the shade of green and some crappy grey on the gun. Um, it's not the most action-oriented action figure. You've got some movement. You can move the arms. The arms. This arm pivots at the elbow and you can move the hand around. This arm just pivots at the shoulder and the hand moves. Uh, the waist turns, the head moves, that's it. The legs don't move, they're fixed. Um, so yes, so we're gonna get this painted up there. We're gonna try and make it look awesome. We're gonna do some work on the greens, we're gonna get some chipping, some weathering, a gunk wash, do something with the neoprene undersuit. Try and maybe give it a slight metallic twinge to it because it's got a sort of sheen to it on the studio model, on the, the CGI studio model. The studio, I mean, but you know what I mean. The actual in-game asset, the high resolution textured asset. Uh, so we're going to be doing that in this series. I'm not sure how I'm going to film it because a lot of this is just so big. As you can see from here, I'm struggling to get the camera in a decent place to do any filming. <sighs> yeah, it's. it might just focus on things like the head and maybe an arm or a hand or something like that. But it, the techniques I use on the bits I can film, I'll use on the whole thing. I just can't get all of it filmed. So uh, we need to start taking this apart. Now this is going to be a Patreon exclusive video build series. Uh, what does that mean? It means that uh, for my patrons who support me on Patreon, thank you very much for your support. I absolutely adore you. You'll get to see the full process. You'll get all the videos with all me doing the painting and disassembly and everything else. Well, maybe not disassembly. You'll get the full process, basically, all the how I do it stuff. For those of you who aren't patrons, don't panic. You'll get little video updates like I did with the Kshatatria. Uh, you'll just get a little update. There'll be one at the end of this introduction, just showing you where I'm up to at the end of the first episode, just to keep you in the loop uh, and let you know what you're missing. Uh, if you would like to see the full series, please do consider supporting me on Patreon. Uh, it keeps me doing what I'm doing, making videos for you. Just go along to patreon.com forward slash model making guru uh, and see if you would like to offer your support. You don't have to, it's completely optional. That's why I do little sort of updates for you guys. Um, but if you'd like to, I will be more than grateful. I would adore you completely. There's all the exclusive content on there as well, so do go and check it out. Uh, but yes, we will first of all start with the discombobulation. We need to take this sucker apart. There are some parts of the armour that I think will come off. If you turn this over, he's not, he's not light. There are lots of little screw holes everywhere, so I'm assuming I can... I've seen people pop him apart, like pop the torso apart and things like that, but I'm going to see if I can get this armour off just for ease of painting. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it all, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, but like I say, I may not film some parts. Like I might not, I might not be able to film the disassembly because I'm, I can't really do it on my desk. So there's nowhere else. I'm just gonna have to sit in a chair and take him apart carefully. But it'll be a case of unscrewing all these screw holes. So, if you're a Patreon, then stay tuned for a moment, and we'll come back with whatever I've done off camera, and the next step. If you're not a patron, uh, then stay tuned for where I've got to at the end of this episode coming up right now. Back in a moment. Okay, right, the disassembly has been done. We have many, many screws, basically held together with screws, this thing. There's no glue, thankfully. Everything's, I've not taken the, the jump pack apart because there's no point. Uh, got all the various bits and bobs. Got the head, which was a pig to get off. 
there's a little if you ever do one of these there's a little loop at the back that sits on top of a rod it won't come off so i had to snip it and snap it so that might be damaged when i try and put it back on but i'll have to glue that in place this still rotates but yeah that was that was kind of stressful uh, i have sanded the visor just so that when i come to paint over it it's got some grip for the primer to grab onto. I've got a plan for the visor. The head is one complete unit and I can't see, this is the weird thing, I can't see a seam line anywhere. There's no seam line down the middle, down the side. I don't know how this was done. Unless it was just moulded in one solid piece and this bit was pushed in. It's weird. There's just no seam line on that at all. It's very impressive. So that's that. Uh, there's also a load of other parts. That's not all of it. There's I managed to get all the armour off the legs, there's bits of the legs and there's uh, bits of the feet and knees and then as well as all that, uh, where is it, I managed to get the legs apart so you've got the upper half of the legs and the lower half. Uh, I've screwed these back together again because the armour that I got off you had to take it apart to get it out, you can just snap it back in place, the only problem is I can't get these two apart because there's this kind of shroud, this white bit around these two joints, these two halves, and it's, I don't know how they've got it on because it's, it won't come off. I really don't know how they've got it over this wide bit to get it on the thin bit. It's really weird. It's like a squishy plastic holding it together. So I can't, I can't get those apart without taking that off, but I don't want to take it off because I don't know what that will do. So yeah, so what we're going to have to do is when we paint these armor parts, either spend ages masking them off, or what we might have to do is a mixture of brush painting and airbrush painting on this build. I mean, we'll do some airbrush painting anyway, uh, but we're going to have different shades of green. So it may well be that uh, the base green I'm going to use for most parts will be a Tamiya colour because I need it to be durable for, for masking. But for some of these parts, I may use a Citadel colour just to, to be able to brush paint it and get a reasonably smooth finish. So you might have different shades of green, but that's fine because I want to have different shades of green all over it anyway. Oops, dropping, dropping. Uh, the lower half of the leg came off. It's quite easy. And last of all, there's this entire box full of bits. Yeah, there's quite a lot of bits to this. The one thing I didn't do was move this out of the way. The one thing I didn't do was take the gun apart. I took it apart. This piece with the hand on actually slots inside and there's a couple of tabs in there. So I'm going to do this all in one. Uh, again, I might, most of the hand is actually supposed to be black anyway, so I might be doing some brush painting on the hand armour because it's only a few little plates. So that's going to be done as is. Now the thing I haven't decided on yet is how to fill in some of these screw holes. For example here, I might fill these in, but these, these ones I might leave because it just looks like screws on a gun. Uh, that I'm going to need to do something with. It's just a real pain because filling it in is one thing, but then sanding it down but, so it's not visible but we're out of pain like there as well. So, yeah, uh, I've also got the same issue with the leg armor and things like that, because where the where the leg armor is, this is like the 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 shin and that's the shin and that's the back of the shin. All the screw holes are on the backs. So the leg would go together like that and you'd have these screw holes. Now, I could paint these the base color, then come back fill these in sand it and repaint it but by that point this will be on the leg and i'm trying to avoid masking as much as possible i'm not fussed about the seam lines down the middle in most of this because i like to think when the armor goes on it goes like that so we can kind of get away with that for the most part but uh yeah i'm not sure i mean i could leave the screw holes and make it look like actual screw or bolt holes that hold the armor on that's one option I am tempted to do that actually and just leave those because they're only on the back and you're not really going to see the back that much. But I don't want to be having to fill these and then repaint it and then maybe not match the colour exactly. I don't know yet. I'm tempted to leave them in as they are so it looks like the kind of things where a bolt will go in and hold the armour in place. Again, suggesting that the armour goes on like that and then is bolted on. Because when you see them putting the armour on in the game, it's kind of you never actually really see it but you see it taken off in halo 5 i think and it's all kind of like good they sit on a thing and it pulls it all off so i might might leave the screw holes i'm thinking about that for the foot yeah i'm not sure about the foot i might have to fill those in because they look a bit pants 
we'll figure it out. I've also marked inside left and right for each piece, so I know what I'm doing. So I'm not taking the jump pack apart, don't need to, I can do that in one. So the next step is to do the primage, and for the primage, we're going to be using uh, Citadel's Chaos Black purely because there's so many big parts. I could airbrush this with some UMP primer. I'd be here all week trying to do it. And, you know, some of these parts are really big. You know, the, le the upper legs aren't going to fit in my spray booth. So we're going to use some Chaos Black. I've got a couple of rattle cans of that. So that's the next step. So I'll see if I can set the camera up outside. I'm going to do it outside, obviously, because it's a rattle cam. So I'll see if I can set the camera up outside and we'll get some sprayage done. We'll get the primer down and then we'll figure out what we're going to do. I think the first step is going to be to do the undersuit. So we'll get this primed black and then we'll do something with it. But I'm not sure what yet. So let me go and get it set up outside. If you don't see outside after this bit, it's because I couldn't film it. But I can see the clouds coming over, so I need to go and get it done. So let's go and get some priming done. Back in a moment. <laughs> Right, so that's all the priming done, everything except the uh, the upper legs and the gun. Uh, as you can see, came out rather nice. I am liking that Citadel Primer, the Chaos Black. It's dead easy to put on, and it's nice and smooth. And it's like a rattle cam version of the UMP. And smelling it, I think it's slightly lacquery based, but yeah, it's really nice. It's not the most strongest, toughest primer in the world, but it dries super quick. I don't know if you'll see in the time lapse, but literally I could spray all the parts take two three minutes and by the time that had passed I could pick the parts up and spray all the bits or put them back in the box so yeah it's really good stuff not cheap not cheap at all but as a rattle can alternative to Tamiya it's really quite nice if you for me it's difficult to get Tamiya now because my local hobby craft doesn't store Tamiya anymore all the hobby crafts have stopped stocking them so if I need primer there and then my only option is to go to the Warhammer store uh, or do mail order for stuff I want so uh, ass. anyway yes done so that's all primed um, one thing I will say about the Citadel primers, the product is great, the rattle cans aren't great. They do tend to drip and dribble down the front. So if you are spraying with the uh, Citadel rattle cans, do be careful, like on me when I was leaning over the table to spray stuff at the back, I was conscious of drips of primer dropping off onto the table. Luckily I didn't get any on any parts, but it does happen. So yeah, keep an eye on that. Right, uh, while that's all sorting, we need to sort out some seam lines. Uh, we've got seam lines on the um, assault rifle and we've got seam lines on the upper torso. Uh, now I've already dealt with the upper torso ones, sorry the upper torso, the upper legs, the waist and the crotch. I'm already in the process of dealing with those but I'll show you what I've done. What we have on the gun is a seam line going all the way around. Now the thing I've learned with this plastic, it's, it's, it's a bit rubbish, it's horrible. When you try and sand it, it kind of goes a bit fuzzy. I drilled out the ends of the battle rifle here, you might see, I don't know if it'll come through, put something white behind it. You can see there, maybe, maybe. Anyway, I drilled out these the, the bits on the battle rifle and they've kind of gone a little bit fuzzy inside. I've coated them in glue to try and soften them down a bit. But it's just this plastic does not want to sand or be cut without going all frayed and horrible. So I'm not sure how far I can go with the seam lines. It may be that I have to live with them. But we'll see. So what I'm going to do, first thing we're going to do with this seam line, 
uh, is try and get rid of some of this there's like a bit of flash almost it's a bit of a step but there's almost a bit of flash as well so what I've been doing is just quite simply going along and just scraping off with my knife any major excess it's like a little bit of flash on the lip on one side which is kind of annoying but it's easily scraped off because what I want is just a step or a gap so I'm just going around the rifle scraping that off now this seam line here is is quite faint the seam line at the bottom is more of a pronounced step so I might have to live with that but this stuff is just it doesn't want to it's not really happy being cut or sanded at all it just goes all fuzzy and horrible so I might as I say I might be limited to and the citadel thing i might be limited to living with it living with the seam i want to try and get as flat as possible so i can get some sprue goo on here and try and level it out so this will be an initial this seems to be working better if you've got a citadel uh, seam line seam line remover this does um, seem to work a little better so i'm just going to go around get rid of all these seams and then we'll go in with the sprue goo right well that cleanup's initial cleanup's been done still looks terrible but there you go uh, as well as the knife blade and the citadel uh, seam line remover I also went around with my small file small metal file um, where there was a raised lip it was really hard to sand down so I went in with the file and then went in with some um, sanding sticks just to smooth it off so it still looks like gash pretty much and there's big gaps but we're going to try and fill those in now i have been doing if you wonder why i've covered in green stuff on my hands i've been trying to get some of the stuff off on the legs and i'll be honest with you i won't put it on camera now because i have to move the camera but it's not going well this stuff just really does not like to be sanded so when this is finished i'm not going to claim that all the seam lines will be hidden or perfect it may just be they're as good as I can get them given the plastic it's just horrible it's not like normal model plastic so anyway right let's get these things filled in so we're going to use our good old standby sprue goo you could use fillers uh, and I could use fillers on some of these deeper ones but I hate using fillers and sprue goo works just as well uh, and it's also cheaper uh, so we're just going to go over these seam lines with the sprue goo and I've learnt from the legs, try and keep it as simple as possible. Don't put it everywhere because getting it off and smooth is a massive challenge again with this plastic. So yeah, it's not the most pleasant of experiences trying to get these flat and filled. So I'm just going to go around this seam line with the sprue goo. The idea here, because we haven't glued it together, so I've not, you know, done any sealing here there's no glue coming out from when we glued it together is just to try and get some in the join and hopefully it'll fill it and sit on top of it and I can sand it back but I'm getting this feeling that it's not going to be a perfect job on this build it's just I don't know what this plastic is it's horrible like you try and sand it and it just goes all kind of fuzzy and bizarrely, if you try and then take off the fuzz with your knife, it just doesn't want to come off. It's really weird. I think if I do ever do one of these again, I don't think I'll worry about the seam lines. I'll take the, the, the frame of mind that it's an action figure. Action figures have seam lines. That's the way they are. So we're just going to go along here. Now I'm not going to fill in the bit where the ammo counter is because I'm going to put a piece of plastic card in there uh, I'm going to see if I can somehow figure out how to get the ammo counter on there maybe with uniposca pens but it depends how neatly I can write it it may come out looking like absolute pap in which case it'll just have to be powered off there you go that's my excuse now, I'm trying to not make massive fat beads because I'm having troubles on the legs sanding those back so they're not visible they fill in the gap fine but they kind of leave bits so I'm just trying to be as minimalistic and neat here but if it ends up with visible panel lines seam lines 
<sighs> so be it. So be it. So I'm going to go around the rest of the gun and get those filled in with the sprue goo. Uh, if you've not seen one of my videos before and you're wondering what sprue goo is, it's just to me extra thin cement with a whole mess of bits of plastic card dumped in, quite a lot, and then left for a few hours to dissolve. And basically the plastic card or the sprue you can use dissolves into the glue. The glue becomes the carrier for the plastic. And what you're doing is basically filling a gap with polystyrene. That's how it works. So kind of cheaper alternative to going out and buying filler. Now I will have to do some filler on this model uh, and I forgot where I was going to, oh yeah I might have to fill in these with some actual filler from you know some milliput so we'll see how that goes but I'll go around and get the rest of this gun done uh, and then we'll get all that sanded off and then we'll get on to the next section. It's just taking about half an hour 45 minutes to sand one outside of one leg so this is not this is not a quick process. If you're gonna get one of these, don't fill, don't try and fill the gaps. It's more hassle than it's worth. Anyway, I'll go and get the rest of this gun done. This will need to sit for 24 hours to fully cure, and then I can sand it. So I'll uh, go and get this done, finish off sanding the legs, and then we'll come back. We'll do the next bit while this is drying, which I'm not sure what it is yet. Back in a moment. Spartan butt. Yeah, Spartan butt. <sighs> right, next step. Now uh, you can see here I filled in all the lines on the legs, there's the seams at the top and the bottom, uh, and these have been sanded back. It's not 100% perfect, but again, given the limitations of this plastic, which I assume is vinyl, uh, it's about as good as I'm going to get it. Now if you're wondering why it's green everywhere, it's because this paint comes off and turns your sanding sticks into that. Yeah, so that's why I've got green on my hands. So it's about as far as I can go with those seam lines basically. Yeah, it's not perfect. These things here, I'm going to get some plastic card and put a little square of plastic card in there just to hide those because I couldn't sand those. But what we're going to do next is I've decided I'm going to leave the screw holes uh, in the armor plates to suggest, like I said at the start, places where bolts go in and hold the armor together. What I will do though is fill in these holes here, the butt, butt hole, uh, and here. Uh, because and there's one there and there just because they look a little weird on the on the bodysuit so yeah it's not gonna look a bit right is it if it's got holes there so we need to fill these in uh, and what we're going to do is we are going to use something you've never seen me use before I don't think uh, we're going to use some milliput yes milliput it's a two-part putty uh, this is the standard one uh, now if you're not sure what, how to use milliput this is your guide you get two rods or two sausages of stuff. You get the poo coloured one, poop, and you get the yellow one. And it's dead easy to do. All you need is your milliput, a glass of water, some water of some sort, and a bit of patience. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take some milliput. We're gonna cut off and length, if I can get the plastic down. And what you want to do is you want to cut about the same length of milliput from each sausage. So we've got one there. Now it's important to put these back in the bag and close the bag up. These do go off after a while. If you've had it more than say a year or something, it's probably not usable. And once it's gone off, all, look at that, it just looks like poop, it's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible, it's minging. Um, all it means is that it won't cure and you'll just end up with softness all the time. <laughs> That's another piece. Okie dokie. Put those to one side. And all we do now is pretty much mix them together. And it's actually quite hard work to get them to mix. And what you need to do is do it on camera. What you need to do is mix these together. Ow, knuckles, you can hear my knuckles popping. Mix these together for a few minutes, just until you get a nice uniform color and it's kind of warmed up. Basically, it's a two-part putty, so by themselves, each sausage is just inert, it doesn't do anything, but once you mix them together, chemical reaction takes place, and it starts to cure. And by cure, I mean set rock hard. Uh, basically, what happens is, after over about three or four hours, I'm just gonna wet my fingers a little bit so it's not sticking so much. After about three or four hours, it starts to cure to the point where by the end of it, it's rock hard. You can sculpt, you can, you know, use sculpting tools, you can use your engraving tools. You can do 
what's the word I'm looking for? Scribing tools, although depends on the particular putter. This might be a bit powdery for actual scribing. But it's basically a really good thinner. Now I don't, a, a filler even. Now I don't tend to use putties just because they're a ball ache and they're a pain to, get, to clean up and sand away. I much prefer my sprue goo because it's quicker to put on. I can make it for dirt cheap. Just old bits of sprue and some glue. So I can make it for the cost of the glue basically. Um, and well, this is really getting warm now. Um, and it's just easier to sand away because you're just sanding plastic rather than this powdery stuff. I've always had the nightmare trying to get this smooth, but it's good. It does work. I don't like using it where there's details I might need to rescribe. I, I hate filling where there's like panel lines and things. I'd rather just leave a seam line. Okay, so that is now squidged. My hands have had a jolly good workout. And I think we're ready to roll. So what we need to do is get something to roll these on. I'm looking around, we'll use an old Ziploc bag. Just so I'm not mashing it into my desk, basically. So that's nice and nice. So what we want to do is we want to make a bit of a sausage because we want to fill the screw holes. The screw holes are actually quite deep. So it's a lot softer now and it's warming up nicely. So we've got a nice even color. It's gone warm and it's a lot softer. So we're gonna take a piece off and we're quite simply going to roll a little sausage. And it's gonna to stick to the bag and the bag's gonna misbehave. Brother, brilliant. So we're gonna roll ourselves. Let me just make sure this, I know it's out of focus actually. There we go. We're gonna roll ourselves a wee little sausage. Because I want to thread this into the screw hole. It were. I'm gonna plug his butt. Basically I'm making a butt plug. Let's just, just leave it at that, shall we? Remember, this is Patreon exclusive, so I can swear. Bollocks! Cock! Arse! Oh, fuck! There you go. I like these Patreon exclusives because it does, as I say, it does mean I can swear. So if something goes wrong, I'll be like, oh, bollocks! This is actually quite annoying. It's not staying still. Right, let's roll this out. Into a little. I popped my end off. Hello. Into a lovely, lovely sausage. If it starts sticking to your fingers and you're getting powdery stuff, just wet your fingers. It's absolutely fine. Now this is not exactly exciting, I know. But if you want to know how to use milliput, this is how you use milliput. I say I tend not to use it very often. I've had this for about a year and a half, this packet, and I've not used much. I think the last time you saw me use this, actually I tell a lie, was on a Colonial Viper, and that's what, about three years ago. So, yeah. While I'm doing this, how is everyone? Uh, just let me take this moment while I'm rolling this, it's really boring, to say thank you for being patrons. It's absolutely fucking brilliant that you do that. Um, I know I've not done a lot of exclusive content, purely because I've not had time, I've not been able to, because I've had other stuff to do as well. Um, but I know sometimes you might think, why, why, what am I getting out of this? Uh, what you're getting out of this is the fact that I can do this every day of the week now to make content and even though I mean I will be try to do more obviously but even though I don't do a lot of exclusive content just purely because of the nature of the current bills like e-models and stuff even though I don't do a lot of exclusive content it does mean that I'm not having to go to work for nine hours a day and get home knackered and not be able to do anything until the weekend and produce one video a month so even though you may not get anything specifically exclusive you are getting more content because don't forget you can follow me on Facebook model making guru and also in the boom hut I get to spend all my evenings hanging out in the boom hut and making sure you're all having a good time in there it's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash model boom hut so although you may not get anything specifically exclusive to you guys not very often although I do do my best you're allowing me to produce more and more content so everybody benefits from your kindness I mean, most of all me, obviously, because it means I can keep doing this all day, every day. And it's absolutely brilliant. But everybody benefits. And although you may not get anything exclusive, you're getting more content end off, full stop. So by helping me, you're helping yourself get more content. Right, so now we have a sausage. Let's bring in the butt. Spartan butt. 
I've no idea if this will work, but we'll give it a try. So let me just readjust the focusings. Okay, so all we're going to do is dead simply screws in there. This will screw together again. We're just going to thread this in till it goes down. It's got a butt worm. Let me think. I have a little proddy tool, which is just a cheap sculpting tool I got from the pound shop, believe it or not. My local pound shop had a lot of sculpting tools. I'm like, wow, really? How much is that pound? Okay, brilliant. What I'm going to do is jam this in. Jam it. Because what I don't want it to do is set rock hard and then just drop down. So I want to jam it in there like I'm loading a cannon. And I know my hand's in the way. That's a really bad place to do, isn't it? Jam this in. Squidge, squidge. So I know it's not going to drop now. It's going to set hard and fill that hole. I'm going to put a little bit more on. More on. <laughs> mm. And at this point, it's a sticky up blob. But that's fine. Because what I'm going to do now, I'm going to wet my finger. And I'm just going to, I hope you can see this on camera. I know camera's in a really bad place. I'm going to squish it down and tease it out. flatten it and the reason I'm flattening it like this is because I want as little as possible to have to sand off later on so there we go that's that I want to try and make it as flat as possible so that when I sand it later I'm just sanding off a little bit uh, let's see can we get let's get a cotton bud now, I actually get really stressed out when I'm doing this. I'm just going to wet, moisten my cotton bud because I hate doing this. I hate doing filling. I will be honest with you. Oh, I hate doing this. It's my least favourite thing about modern way I can do in the filling. I absolutely abhor, abhor it. Okay, so I'm just going to wash it out of these little panel lines. I don't need it in there. Okay. Once again, there's another cotton bud. So it is workable for a little while uh, with water. It's a little bit tough, but you can do it. I'm just going to clean it out of these little grooves and try and flatten it a bit more. Because I'm just trying to fill the hole. And even if it's like not absolutely perfect and not totally flat by the end of it, when I sand it back, it's not the end of the world. As long as there's just not a gaping hole there, that's all I'm looking for. Because let's be honest, when somebody comes in your house, because I will be selling this, so if you buy this, if somebody comes in the house and they're not going to go, wow, look at the big screw on, back on the arse of that Master Chief. They're going to go, wow, you've got a three foot tall Master Chief. How cool is that? Can I marry you and have all your babies? Because trust me, if you meet a girl who's into Halo, then you've got a winner there. You've got a keeper. So that's going to do. Just have a quick look in the light. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's sticking up a little bit, but it's not too bad. A bit of tissue, just to mop up the excess. And that is now filled. So what should happen now is that will set rock hard after about three or four hours. It should be sandable. I mean, with, as with everything, you want to leave it about 24 hours ideally, but that should now in about three or four hours be sandable, but I'll probably leave it overnight. Once that's done, I'll just quickly sand over it just to flatten it down a bit. And then that's it then. So I've got to do uh, those two and that one and the butthole. I debate whether to do that one on camera, but I'm, I'm not I'm not going to do that on camera. There's just it's just not right. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, there are no, none of these holes on the front. They're all on the back. So. So if you know if you do buy this, you're never going to show it with the back. You're going to show the front. So I'll go away and get the rest of those done. And when we come back. Uh, I'll probably have gotten this primed. I'll have sorted out the gun because that all after 24 hours that'll need sanding down, and I'll fill in the holes on that one. Uh, and we'll make a start on actually painting. And the first thing I think we're going to do, and this will probably change drastically by the time it goes to the next section. I think the first thing we're going to do is uh, get some. Once these are all black, get some shading on these neoprene parts. And they're not really neoprene, but the bodysuit. I'll probably just do it with the black primer and then some airbrushing of grey. So I'll go make more sausages. Sausage. Sausage. Go make more sausages and I'll go and fill in more holes. Uh, I'll see how long this episode is. So we'll either be back in a moment or I'll see you in the next episode. 
in which case I'll do a quick wrap up. So, back in a moment. Okie dokie, so the Milliput has had uh, overnight to cure. Like I said in the last bit, it's usually about three or four hours before it's sandable, but just leave it overnight, it's never a bad idea. That's now all been sanded back. I'm, I, I can't help touching his butt, it's just wrong. It's just wrong, it's just the most visibly obvious one. Uh, I don't know. So yes, these have all been sanded back. Uh, now they look nice and flush. There are some bits where I'll need to go in and just rescribe in the little grooves where there's like a fold in the in the undersuit. I need to scribe that back in, hopefully, and just get it sanded so it looks about right. Uh, they look nice and flush, but the true test will be when we get the primer coat on it. If there's anything that needs further work, so if anything's sticking up or obvious or any edges that I need to deal with, uh, they'll become apparent under the primer. It can look great now when you look at it under the light, but since you get it in one solid colour, like white or black or whatever, it will stand out like a sore thumb if it needs further sanding. So we'll get it, get it primed. I'm waiting for it to not be about to rain outside. So um, I've just been outside sanding these because I've actually discovered it's quite pleasant to sit outside when it's not bad weather and do your sanding. Saves getting dust everywhere and breathing it in. So yes, they've been done. So we'll get that primed. Uh, on the gun, same again. These are all uh, sanded back nicely. Uh, again, the We'll have another look once it's been primed, just to make sure these are all flush. The seam line itself, eh, I don't know. It looks all right. I think it's still going to be a visible seam line, but I mean, he's going to be holding the rifle, so you're not really going to see underneath. But I think that's about the best I can get on this on this plastic, this vinyl. I assume it's vinyl. It's just, it's. I can't get it sanded properly. It's horrible. I don't like it. I won't be doing another one of these because if I do another sort of big vinyl figure like this. Yeah, I won't be filling any seam lines. And Busby, no, I'm not doing a Superman because Superman is rubbish. My mate Busby likes Superman. And Superman's just completely naff. Batman is where it's at, not Superman. And no, not the Ben Affleck Batman either because he's rubbish. Anyway, what am I going on about? So yes, uh, there was one issue on here. You can see on the rifle here, there's like these little recessed ridges that go all the way around the top of the fairing here. That's kind of been filled in by, by the putty. Now I've tried sanding it in and it's just not having any of it. And I, I thought about sculpting it in with the scribing tool, but it's going to look really harsh and hard, and it's not really a super hard edge, it's kind of reasonably soft. So what I might do here is just actually stick some kind of greeble over this just to cover that up. Uh, because if I start sculpting and farting around, it's just going to mess up the, the filling I've done, and it'll just be an absolute, you know, opening a big can of kittens. Can of kittens? No. Can of worms. You heard kittens, you open cans of worms. So I might just stick a greeble on top of that and just mask it um, I'm, I'm not really fussed because it's not bad this rifle but it's not super accurate it's not exactly spot on for example the fire mode switch is the wrong way around but hey we're not going to niggle uh, and what I will need to do I'm going to put a piece of plastic card in here where the light the torch is underneath just to I'm, gonna, I'm not going to fill that seam line because I can't sand it so I'll get a circular piece of plastic card and glue that in uh, I will need to cut a piece of plastic card to fit in here on which I can then somehow paint the ammo counter but for now we'll just leave that as it is it can be primed and everything else and then we'll glue something on there so that's going to do that so it just needs to go off to priming when the weather isn't pants but that's going to do it for this episode uh, in the next one hopefully we'll start on the actual painting proper uh once these have been primed all the, the sort of undersuit part if this was a if this was a movie this would be a neoprene diving wetsuit neoprene wetsuit kind of thing with rubber stuff stuck on it so I'll, i keep calling it neoprene i don't mean it's actually neoprene it's just I'm thinking about how they make costumes for movies and things like, you know, the bat suit and stuff. So this would be a neoprene suit with stuff stuck on it. This will be primed black and then we're going to go over it with some grey. That's my plan. And then we can start painting all the green stuff, the base colours. But that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. As always, thank you so much for being a patron. It does mean the absolute world to me. I won't go over it again because I waffled in the last bit. But thank you so much. You guys are super, super awesome. And I will try and give you as much exclusive content as I can going on. You'll still get the exclusive week ahead look at the stuff I do for models. Uh, you're getting this. And then obviously, as I can fit things in, I'll do you more exclusive series. It's just what I can fit in where I can. So thank you so much for your support. Absolutely adore you. Uh, the next one I will crack on with this as soon as I finish filming this and got the, edit, the episode uploaded. I'll crack on with the next bit. So stay tuned for the second episode. But until next time, thank you so much to my dear, dear patrons. I love you all. Take care of yourselves. Go do some, something awesome. Go be awesome. I messed up my own ending sentence, didn't I? 
I've kind of waffled at top speed throughout this whole episode because I'm quite excited to do this. So there you go. Anyway, shut up, Fox. Shut up. Right, let them go. Let them go and get on with their lives. Go do something awesome. Go be awesome. And until next time, adios, amigos. <laughs>